This is probably the most sold filter wheel of them all. The Siebel filter wheel for five two inch filters. There's also one for seven two inch filters. And you can also add 31 millimeter or 36 millimeter filters in it. And even it's so popular, it's not that easy actually to install it. It's not self-explanatory. So join me today to install this filter wheel on my FRA 400. See you right after the trailer. Hey, this is View Into Space. I'm Sascha from Switzerland. So grüezi miteinander and thanks for watching my channel. So without further ado, let's start and open the box. There's in here some stuff which you will see if you need. Then obviously there's in here the filter wheel and again some other adapters and so on. And obviously a USB cable. We need that later. There is also a screwdriver in here. So for the moment we will install two inch framed filters. So most of the stuff here is actually when you install unframed filters. So I put this for a moment away. So the first thing we have to do, we have to install the filters. That's at the very start. Counterintuitively, I assume you would think that this comes at the end. And that might also be one of the mistakes you can do. Start without the filters in. So to install the filters, we have to open this. This is metal. This is massive. And you see at the back all these silver screws and we have to open them up now. For that you can obviously use this screwdriver which is actually included for that purpose. Or because I'm lazy I have here from Timo this automatic screwdriver which I really like. Okay and once all the screws are loose you can simply open this up. We put this here to the side and now we will have to screw the filters in. You see there are numbers one, two, three, four, five. So you have now to know a good strategy. Now when you work with filters there's something that I would always recommend. One is that you wear gloves because there's nothing worse than having a fingerprint on your filter and it can always happen. And the second thing is a blower to get any bit of dust away. Sometimes, especially when I work with narrowband filters, I also wear a mask. That also helps that you do not spit on it. So I presently only have two filters, the Antlia Quad Band and the Antlia ALT-P, which is the dual narrowband filter. So when you have only two filters, do not put them in slot one and two, for example. That's not optimal. It should be a little bit balanced. So usually what I do, I say slot one stays empty. That's just my default. Slot two, light pollution filter. So here the Antlia quad band. And then on the other side, so number four or five would then be the ALPT. I absolutely learned my lesson in dealing with these narrowband filters. At the very beginner stage, I had only filter drawers and stuff happened. These filter drawers fell down. I touched them. So these days I have a very high respect from these filters. I will try to handle them as few as possible to expose them to the open dusty environment as few as possible, which means I will enter them now as fast as I can in the filter wheel before I close it down, dust it off and then they're safe and I'm happy and that's why I love filter wheels so much. So I got them out now without issues and now I will screw it in. In the same way I will proceed with the ALPT which I already used for a long time. I really like this filter. Okay and that's how it looks right now. So now we have actually to take the filter wheel off because we need to install something from behind. For that we have here three screws, the inner ones, which we now also have to take out. Before you take it out, remember how it was 
positioned. So I look here, I have here right at the corner the number 5 and that's what I remember. Then I'll take it where there's no danger that I will touch a filter and take it out. For the moment I put a paper on it, also simply as a protection from dust, from spit when I'm talking and so on, that nothing happens to them. So now here we're now ready that we can attach the camera. So we need the camera. So here is my SIBO ASI 2600 MC Air. I took the antenna off, it's easier to handle then. So the first thing we have to do, we have to remove this tilt plate. For that we need an Allen key. I think that's the advantage of astrophotography. I never possessed as many Allen keys as now. Okay, so I got this off. You will not need that anymore. So you see now all the holes that you have around here and these four holes, they fit right into the four holes here. So we put that here. Now you will actually find screws in the package to screw it on. I would suggest from a procedural point of view that you first put the four screws in here before you start. This will absolutely prevent you from accidentally drop a screw on the sensor. Once we have done that, Okay, and by the way, just to say, in this very short time that I did this now, there's already a little bit of dust here, which I now have to blow off again. So just be aware of that. Obviously, dust can be removed with flats, but if you keep the whole thing clean and you close it down with as few dust as possible in here, that's obviously an advantage. So now that we have done that, we can actually reinstall the filter wheel. Now remember to put it in exactly as it was. We had the five here at the corner. Okay, that's done too. This all should not be tightened too much, but enough. I already see here a little bit of hair. Definitely a good opportunity now to give everything a nice dusting. And now we can actually close down the filter wheel. And now comes the tedious task of putting all of these screws in again. It's good when you do it crosswise. So I put one in here. Now I do one on the other side. Okay, so we have the camera. We have the filter wheel filled, connected to the camera. Something missing? Oh yeah, the telescope. So how do we connect this thing now to the telescope? For that, you need actually this here. This is an M54 to an M48 adapter. You can screw that now in here. So that's done. And you have a smaller light pass. There are adapters included, which you can put now in here. Now this here is my telescope where I will put it on now. A word of caution. If you do not have a pet small design like this is, where it doesn't matter at all how much you put it in the back, Remember that you have to recalculate your back focus and take some spacers out. I will still put now a spacer out because why should I put it so much in the back if I can have it closer? Okay, and it's done. So I wouldn't say that this is something very complex, but you have to know how. <laughs> and it's not very good explained in the packaging. But I think now that you've seen it, now that you know, it's easy to do. And just as a last word, I would really recommend, even if you do one shot color, even if you have just two filters, two filters, you should have a light pollution and then dual narrow band filter. It's absolutely worth having a filter wheel as you 
have no danger that your filter is destroyed, polluted, and you do only have to take flats about every three to six months and not for every shooting. Because in here the whole light path which is relevant for the flats is protected from additional dust so there will be no changes. There will also be no changes when you rotate. That's not relevant because the filter, the sensor glass, everything rotates with you and the vignetting is even all around. So you save yourself a lot of time, quality of the picture and potentially also money if anything will go broke. <laughs> So I hope this was helpful and see you next time. Clear skies.